I mentioned that these uncertainty components can be calculated numerically. And now we will be looking how exactly we do that. And for this we will use the so-called Krachten spreadsheet approach. So that each of these components, which in our case actually look like this, they will be calculated separately so that finally for each of these components we will get numerical values exactly as seen here. And in addition, these components are used for calculating the uncertainty contributions or the so-called uncertainty indexes that we saw in the previous lecture. And the uncertainty index of an input quantity x1 is found by dividing its squared uncertainty component with the sum of squares of all the uncertainty components. So that once we have calculated the uncertainty component values using the Krachten approach, finding the uncertainty indexes is very easy. Our aim now is to calculate numerically the uncertainty component for our uncertainty estimation, whereby the most important thing is numerically calculating the partial derivative. And let us start by writing out the function. Our output quantity is calculated by some function from a number of input quantities. n different input quantities. And let us examine, for example, the uncertainty component corresponding to the input quantity number one. All others go just the same way. So the uncertainty component reads like this. The uncertainty of the output quantity that is caused by this particular input quantity and is calculated like this. And whenever we calculate numerically partial derivatives, we replace these infinitesimally small changes or infinitesimally small deltas by finite deltas. So that the essence of approximation that is made in this case is the following. Now, with delta x1 all is clear, but how do we find delta y? For this we have to look at this function again. And it is obvious that we have to subtract from the function found at position x1 plus delta x1, the function as it stands here, whereby x1 has not been modified. So, delta y is calculated as follows. So that we subtract just like this. And now we can substitute this delta y here so that the uncertainty component calculation will read as follows. Oh, 
And now, an important thing in numerical calculation of partial derivatives is how do we choose which value of delta we use here. And what Krachten proposed, and this is why this method carries his name, he proposed that let us take the delta equal to the standard uncertainty of this input quantity. So that we can use like this. And the beauty of his proposal is that these two now cancel out. So that eventually the uncertainty component is calculated as follows. This is the way the Krachten approach works. And we will now illustrate this by calculating, as a concrete example, the result, the uncertainty of our particular ammonium determination example. Let us see now how the Krachten approach of calculating the uncertainty components by the numerical method works in practice. I have prepared here an Excel spreadsheet in such a way that we have here all our input quantities, their values, their standard uncertainties and their units. And also I have added here the model equation and the equation for calculating the combined standard uncertainty from the uncertainty components. And the first step of setting up, setting up a Krachten calculation is building a Krachten matrix. Krachten matrix has as many columns and as many rows, as many input quantities we have, meaning in our case it's a 5 to 5 matrix. And it is useful to specifically mark the diagonal elements of the Krachten matrix, as it will be evident later on. This will be used for the calculation in an important way. And now each of the columns in the Krachten matrix corresponds to one of the input quantities. Therefore, it is useful to mark them, and this can be done with copy and with the so-called paste special function, whereby we use the transpose option so that all the quantity names that initially were in a column are now in a row. The next thing, we now have to organize all of these quantity values into these columns here. And for doing that, we make this one equal to the first value. And it is useful now to fix the column D, but not the row 7. And this enables us to copy this value throughout this matrix. So we copy now, and again we don't just paste what do the paste special, and we do paste special and we paste formulas. So that we see now that in each of the cells here, we basically have the same quantities that in the corresponding cell in this column here. And now the diagonal elements come into play. To each of these diagonal values, we will now add the standard uncertainty of the respective input quantity. 
so that here we add the standard uncertainty of a sample. Here we add the standard uncertainty of b0. Here we ha add the standard uncertainty of b1. Here we add the standard uncertainty of ft. And here we add the standard uncertainty of delta c dc. So we see now that even though now the values in these columns are still fairly similar, in each column the diagonal value is different from the others. And now we will calculate here and also here the output quantity value. And let's see how that will work. And sample. Let us also use the formatting in such a way as it was in other places. Yeah. Okay. And now the value we will find as follows from a sample. We subtract B0. We then divide by B1, multiply by the dilution factor, and add delta C dC. Even though its value is 0, it is extremely important to add it. Because as we see later on, in one of the cases, its value will not be 0 anymore. So, and this value, of course, carries the units milligrams per liter. And now, with this same formula, which we can copy, we can calculate all these values also here. Values. And now, we will calculate the uncertainty components as simple subtraction between these values that we have here and this value here. Basically, all these values are the same as was shown on the whiteboard, the value of the function, whereby to one of the input quantities, the delta input quantity, which according to the Prachten approximation is approximated by standard uncertainty, is added. So components come here. And again, we subtract. And we again fix the column. <coughs> and it is dollar $d13 that we subtract here. So, and if we now copy this component here, we can easily find the values of all the uncertainty components. Now, it is necessary to calculate the squared components, because all of them have to be taken to the square. Component squared, we find like this. And it is, of course, needed now to calculate the sum of the squared components. And this sum is here. And the square root of this sum, actually, is the combined standard uncertainty of the output quantity. And we can calculate it here in this cell. Equal to square root of this. So that it is exactly 0 0.00686, as was seen in the slides. Based on these data that we have now, 
we also can calculate easily the uncertainty indexes or the uncertainty contributions. And for each input quantity, the uncertainty index is calculated by dividing the squared uncertainty component by the sum of squares of all the components. And again, it is useful to fix here the column so that we can easily copy them. And these indexes can be formatted as percentages, even though at the moment they are expressed simply as ratios. And expressing as percentages, we do by formatting the cell as percentage. So these are here the uncertainty indexes that we saw also in the lecture slide. And we can mark this result in green. So we now have our measurement result and its combined standard uncertainty here. And we now can express our measurement result in full using the expanded uncertainty. And let us do that here. Our result is ammonium nitrogen concentration in the sample and we start parenthesis the measured value is here here we put the plus minus symbol And here we put the expanded uncertainty, which we, in this case, express as K2 uncertainty. And here the parenthesis end, milligrams per liter is the unit. And in our case, the coverage factor is equal to 2. Importantly, we also need to take care of the decimal places. In this case, is our first significant digit is 1, so that we express the uncertainty in 2 significant digits, which means 3 decimal places, or 3 places after the comma. So. And this could be our measurement result. And because, as we saw, we have the reason to expect that in this case the result really does correspond to the normal distribution, we also can write here norm. 